One of the advantages of airborne wind energy is uh, that you can fly the system at a higher wind velocity than... This isn't a turbine spinning on a tower or a mast sunk into the earth. It floats, drawing energy from winds unreachable by land-bound blades. Above rooftops and ridgelines, the air is stronger, steadier, and unseen. For decades, engineers have chased it with kites, wings, and cables, hoping to unlock a cleaner kind of power, one that soars instead of stands. But the sky doesn't surrender its secrets easily. What seems simple from the ground turns chaotic up there. Yet progress continues, quietly and persistently. Because this time, we're not just pushing against the wind, we're learning how to move with it. Why reach for the sky? Why climb higher? For more than a hundred years, turbines have grown taller, heavier, and more complex. But even at record heights, they're chained to the ground, slicing through winds slowed by hills, forests, and buildings. Far above, conditions change. The air is faster, smoother, and less disturbed. That's where airborne wind energy comes in. Instead of building taller towers, why not let the generator fly? No massive steel towers, no deep foundations, far fewer raw materials. Light gliders, kites, and soft wings can climb to 800 meters, where winds can be twice as powerful. The concept is simple, yet radical. Harvesting energy from the sky without reshaping the land. It's not only about efficiency, it's about reach bringing renewable power to islands, fragile ecosystems, and temporary outposts. Energy unchained. If it works, it could rewrite what's possible for renewables and change our relationship with the wind itself. Two paths in the air, flygen versus ground gen. Not all airborne systems work the same way. In fact, two rival approaches are battling quietly in the sky. The first, flygen, puts the generator on board the aircraft. A kite, drone, or balloon spins rotors as it rides the wind, sending electricity down its tether. Compact and elegant in theory, but all the weight, electronics, and failure points are in the air. And if something breaks, it falls. The second, ground gen, takes the opposite route. The kite doesn't generate power directly, it pulls, Flying in looping figure eights, it tugs a tether that spins a ground-based drum or generator. Outbound flight produces energy. Inbound reeling resets the system. Less hardware in the sky, more control on the ground. It's a choice. Airborne power plants versus airborne puppets. Brains in the air or anchored safely below. Neither is flawless, but both seek the same answer how to capture the wind without trying to cage it. The art of crosswind flight. Wind energy isn't just about catching the breeze, it's about how you cut through it. That's why these machines don't just hover. They arc, loop, and weave figure eights. A kite slicing sideways across the wind accelerates. The faster it flies, the more lift it generates. More lift means more pull, and more pull means more power. This is called crosswind flight. It's the secret behind airborne wind energy. Instead of drifting like a sailboat, they carve across the air like race cars hugging a curve. The result? The apparent wind on the wing can be several times stronger than the natural wind. And since power rises with the cube of wind speed, small increases yield huge gains but precision is everything. These kites perform complex aerial choreography, guided by sensors and automation. One wrong step, and the whole routine collapses. No energy, no flight. Yet if mastered, it's like pulling electricity straight from the sky, not by brute force, but by finesse. When dreams fell from the sky, ambition took flight long before results did. In 2005, Alteros launched the Bati, a helium-filled, donut-shaped turbine 
hovering 300 meters high, delivering 30 kilowatts. The vision? Remote villages, disaster zones, mountain outposts, but the dream deflated. Alteros abandoned power for telecom. The problem wasn't the wind, it was economics. Then came Makani, backed by Google X and later Alphabet. A sleek 600 kilowatt flying wing with eight rotors, autonomous, advanced, and years in development. It worked, it generated, but it couldn't scale affordably. In 2020, Alphabet pulled the plug. Makani crashed, both literally and financially. Both proved the skies could yield energy. Neither proved it could be done cheaply, reliably, and simply enough. Their failures weren't from lack of wind, but from complexity, cost, and expectations. Yet they left behind something valuable. Data, lessons, and a warning for those still chasing altitude. Sky sails, the kite that endures. Amid bold dreams and quiet failures, one company has quietly done what others couldn't. Keep a kite working. Not a demo, not a toy, but a grid-connected airborne system. Their design is deceptively simple. An inflatable soft kite tethered to a ground station with a winch and generator. But it's built on seven years of engineering. The kite launches, climbs, and traces a figure eight. Outbound flight tightens the tether, spinning the generator. At full extension, it shifts its angle to reduce tension, allowing the tether to reel back in with minimal energy. Then, the cycle repeats. Since 2021, SkySails has operated in storm-prone Mayotta, where turbines can't survive. Their 100 to 200 kilowatt units are now for sale, and they've passed independent performance tests. Quiet, steady, proven. In this space, that's everything. Kite power, the flying battery. While SkySails focuses on persistence, Kite Power bets on portability. Their Hawk system doesn't resemble a power plant at all. It looks like a shipping container. Inside, a soft wing kite, fiberglass frame, generator, 400 kilowatt battery, and the software to fly itself. Once deployed, it delivers 30 kilowatts for up to 10 hours. It launches, flies, and lands autonomously. No tower, no crane, just kite, cable, and code. Designed for islands, military bases, and places ruled by diesel, it can be set up in a single day. The tether, seven times lighter than steel, transmits force with remarkable efficiency. Guided by sensors and real-time software, it adapts its flight path to changing winds. Today, it's flying in Aruba, proving its resilience across climates. Like sky sails, Kite Power sees its future not in massive farms, but in mobile, flexible energy that leaves no trace. Grounded by rules and risk. Getting a kite airborne is hard. Keeping it legal is harder. These systems live in a regulatory gray zone. Are they drones, generators, aircraft? In Europe, some are labeled drones. Elsewhere, buildings. Both come with red tape. Then there's trust. Investors want predictable returns. Airborne wind is neither. Turbulence, sensor glitches, or software bugs can send systems plummeting. A 99% success rate isn't enough if the 1% makes headlines. Without long-term flight records, funding remains scarce. Without funding, refinement stalls. It's a vicious loop, keeping many designs grounded. A revolution still waiting to land. Airborne wind feels overdue. The logic works. The prototypes fly. But the field is still niche, not mainstream. Why? Time. Most systems haven't proven they can last through years of storms, seasons, and wear. Scaling is tricky. Multiple kites risk tangling. Autonomy must evolve into choreography. And doubt lingers. If it really works, why don't we see airborne wind farms already? But history tells us patience pays. Offshore wind and solar both took decades to mature. Maybe this is just the beginning. 
For now, the field is defined by promise and hesitation. Each looping figure eight brings us closer to answers. This isn't about turbines anymore. It's about trust. Trusting sensors to ride the wind. Trusting fabric and cables over steel and concrete. Trusting that quiet flight can power real grids. Somewhere right now, a kite is flying. Not for play, but for power. Its rhythm is steady, its pull relentless. And maybe, just maybe, it's pointing to a new kind of future. A world where energy floats, where the sky itself becomes part of the grid. These machines don't just defy gravity, they defy expectations. Sometimes, the best way forward is to let go.